The living word would profit Isaac Prosper of the excellent beauty nation at the City of Wonders. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome back from Kampala. For, for some of you who were online as well, welcome back. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many are excited to be here this morning? Like you. You're so quiet today. Praise God. It's beautiful to serve the Lord. Amen. Why do you preach the gospel? Why do we preach the gospel? Oh, Laban, you're around. <laughs> you're around, brother. Is that Cherisa? Cheritas. Oh, praise God. Ah, she's even smiling. <laughs> oh, you weren't talking when you were here. Oh, beautiful. Good to see you, brother. Amen. <clears throat> The book of Luke, chapter number. Last week I shared about living for the gospel, living for Christ. This morning, in a brief moment, we just want to share something. Praise God. I really pray I will get done within the time. <clears throat> Luke 10 and verse number 6, the Bible says, verse number 5, and in whatsoever house, in and whatsoever house, and in whatsoever house you enter, first say, peace be to this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it and if not it shall return to you again and as your house remain eating and drinking such things as they give for the laborer is worthy of his hire go not from house to house it says for the laborer is worthy of his pay. Yesterday we we're coming from Kampala and you know it appeared like we have spent a lot. And we are wondering, okay, what is the pay? You've just heard that in the Bible. It says a laborer is worth his pay. And in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they gave. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. The amplified version of that. Praise, praise God. And stay on, on, and stay on in the same house eating and drinking. For that what they provide for the laborer is worthy of his wages. <clears throat> he says there is a way, there is a pay. There is a pay. There is a pay. <clears throat> Sorry. And don't hesitate to accept hospital because those who work deserve their pay. NLT version. There are methods of preaching. There are ways of preaching. But the message should remain the same. Preaching is not an option. 
Paul says, woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. So, <clears throat> it, it, it brings it out that if a man does not preach, there is war. He said, woe to me. Samuel said it this way. If I don't pray for you and intercede for you, he said, woe, let me be cast. If I don't pray for you. So why do we preach the gospel? Number one, is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God and the salvation. Romans 1 of verse number 16, read. I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power. The power. Read it. I'm not ashamed of this good news. I'm not ashamed of this good news. About Christ. About Christ. It's the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentiles. First Corinthians chapter number one in verse number eighteen. One eighteen. One eighteen says for the preaching of the cross for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness is to them that perish foolishness but unto us but unto us which are saved which are saved is the power of god is the power of god so there is a place of contemplating and he calls that place the distinction of foolishness and wisdom. Because an opportunity has been given to a man to preach. And if he chooses to preach, he says that's wisdom. If you don't preach, he says that is foolishness. What does the book of Psalms say? 37 says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Why? Because they have done abominable things. So the question is what is repressing? What preaching is replacing the preaching of the gospel? There are preachings in this world. Somebody calls it a doctrine of devils. Praise God. So we preach the gospel because it's the power. When we bring it out, it's the power. The Bible tells us it's power. Now someone says, now I came to church and there was no power. You are lying. This power. I don't know what's your definition of power. When someone is shocked or someone is vibrating with electricity. When someone is dancing and they cannot understand what's happening to them. No. The definition of power, the power is might. Power changes lives. He calls it power. The word we preach is power. The trouble is the orientation or this disposition of someone is sitting in the mind. If you will sit a certain way that enables you to receive the word, then you will know it is power. Look at that in First Thessalonians 2 verse 13. It's power. To one group of individuals, the Bible says, it is, it is the saving power. It, it is the power. So the disposition that did thing is going to save my life. It opens the vault of power. To them that are being saved, it is the power. To those who reject the same gospel becomes the aroma of death. That's what the Bible says. Praise God. Amen. If you look at that in 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 14, he says, he says, thanks be to God who leads us in a triumphant procession through Christ. And who makes us the survival of his knowledge known everywhere by us. To others, it is the aroma of life. To others, it is the aroma of death. 
To others, when they come to church, they see light in their future. To others, they feel they're just reminding them about their troubles. It depends. You're brought before a big menu. And you have to choose. Adam, whatever lies before you, eat it. There are some things you should not eat. That's what he said. He didn't say eat everything. Praise God. Amen. In Luke chapter number 10, he tells us when you enter a house, eat and drink. So, he is giving you the picture. He's giving you the picture. Of what this gospel is. It's about eating and drinking in the kingdom. Amen. And he's talking about the word. That is bread. Drinking. That's the spirit. What drink have you drank this morning? What food have you eaten this morning? The same food causes stomach pain in some people's mouths. In some people's stomachs, rather. He said, Jeremiah ate the scroll. And I ate it. It was sweet in the mouth. And when it entered the stomach, it was painful. What does that mean? As newborn babies desire to see you miracle of the word that you may grow thereby. The same gospel. Papa. The power. How you receive matters. Read it. For this cause, for this cause, also thank we God mm. without ceasing, because when you when you received the word of God, mm. which ye heard of us, mm. ye received it not as the word of men, mm -hmm. but as it is in truth, mm. the word of God, which if which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Praise God. You see, the disposition matters. Why do we preach? Is the power. Why isn't it the power to everybody? The disposition. How are you receiving it? How are you receiving it? He said, it works in those that believe. It's working in those that believe. Amen. Believing is receiving. That's what we said. So how do you receive? You receive by believing. He said, repent and believe the gospel. That's what he said. Repent and believe. That's what Jesus said. In the book of Mark. He said, repent and believe the gospel. Change your mind. Because the mind participates in your receiving. The attitude affects your reception. So if you can work on your attitude, you can receive every day. You can receive every day. You can receive every day. It's the power. The gospel is the power. And the salvation. Is the power. The dunamis. The ability of conversion. Is the power. That's what makes the gospel more than just a preaudition or motivating people. It's the power. That is the invisible quality of the word. That when it comes and if your disposition is right, it changes. It changes circumstances. It effectually works in the that believe. And now, if you continue that, you realize they were speaking the word. You speak the good news. You utter it. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why we preach. It's the power. We preach power. We, this is called wisdom. We preach. We preach. People see wisdom.
Praise God. So it's high time you took the word of God serious. Number two is we preach. Why? Because we have been entrusted to preach. 2 Corinthians 5. He said, occupy until I come. You see, he has given us this mandate of preaching the gospel. No man has enough confidence to preach until or unless they know they have been committed to preach. For those that work with pharmaceutical companies, you realize there is something called marketeers or market representatives. They carry a product with them and they are supposed to talk about it to represent the company where they're coming from. What you don't know that they're doing is soul winning. Being entrusted to preach is soul winning. He said, go to the whole world and preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Now that you know the gospel is a power, the only saving power, God has invested his power in the gospel. The good news. When you speak or when you pray the good news, the power of God comes out. That's listen, it's not just going to cast out because also that is the part of the package. And the sun shall follow they that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils. The gospel is not casting out devils. I mean, gospel is something that has already been done. He says, just in case you find some devils there, cast them out. It's a sign. It's not the main agenda. And these signs shall follow they that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. In verse 20 it says, and they went about preaching the gospel. They did say they went about casting out devils. Because demons are interferences. They are winds of interferences. In our business. So when they come. We cast them out. You will always have an enemy. A common enemy. Call a devil. Being a person. It can be on the road. You cast it out. You cast it out. I said you cast it out. But first, you must have a focused mind knowing that I am preaching the gospel. Now, what about those who say our ministry is casting out demons international ministries? What are they doing? You are staying on the signs. We have already a real deal. <laughs> Peter, let's go. We can't cast out devils. Did he say that? <laughs> they're just going crossing Jesus running away from the crowd the number was too much this, today's access God of increase now God has increased the number and Jesus says no 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 let me first cross the lake and then he finds some legions of devils he said get out get out you can find a demon the demon also can manifest When you so much get involved in the gospel, it can manifest. What did he say? Peter, I have to die in three days and then I will rise again. And the demon appeared. God forbid, you cannot die. And Jesus said, I've seen you get behind me. <laughs> he Praise God. Praise God. 
So the gospel has been entrusted to us. And that's why now we come to church to be trained for the preaching. To be trained for the work of ministry. Read there. Second Corinthians 5 and verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Then he says, old things are passed away. The good news. He says, you are a new creation. That's the good news. Then he says, all things are passed away. That is still good news. And he says, see, all things have become new. That is still the good news. So the gospel is something already done. It makes it powerful that we read it and understand. And we know he's talking about us. In Ephesians, he calls it a path. Created in advance for us to walk in. Isn't it amazing that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the part of finished works. I am the part of finished works. I am that path. I am that way. I am that direction. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Lift up your right hand and say, Father, be for the gospel. Let me preach your word in Jesus' name. Speak in tongue in a minute. La credosh, lita pari, rani topra aga, etrodai limisto fa, erefino anko fra inti il of onvra an, etopra dia copa, liko seja, etralija, hatrenisti ten onkra ankledesh, etoprata tanija, etranaliste zone. Avrando copre interlo, rate coco sova, etralasti, ziso, haxono, e palidi copare dia ancra dan lo indra antestation. In Jesus' name. Just simple like that. Is a pretty gospel. No, no, no. You have to preach something deep that has never been before. No, no, no. You, you are getting out of scripture. I am preaching what is there. That's what makes the gospel easy. And by the way, the Bible has no copyright. Yeah, I don't think Paul and Peter is saying, please, before you preach my scriptures, you have to first do this. It has no copyright. You can repeat the scripture. It's being shared. <clears throat> it's being shared in America. It's being shared in London. It's being shared in Uganda. The same scripture. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. No, no, no. You're preaching what Pastor David preached. No, it's the gospel. I am not ashamed. <laughs> As a minister, you can be in a place and you have exhausted what you think you know you are supposed to preach. And then the morning, the Bible, the, 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 the Spirit just tells you, please speak in tongues. Preach from this access. Uh -uh. What if they say you are repeating? I'm not ashamed. It's the gospel. It's the power. Repetition of power. It's the gospel. Don't you speak the same tongues almost every Sunday? Aren't you ashamed? I'm not ashamed. When I speak in tongues, I get edified. The problems you have, you mean they are not over. It's not about problems that I come to church. I come to commune. I'm not ashamed. It is power. He said, Be thou not ashamed of me, nor of Christ, nor of the testimony of Christ. That's what Paul tells his son Timothy. <laughs> so I'm not ashamed. If you're not ashamed, what happens? What are you doing? Huh? You are celebrating. If you're not ashamed, which means you're celebrating. Now you're over shouting, I am not ashamed. What am I doing? I am celebrating. That's what we call it Sunday celebration service. We celebrate. We're not ashamed. La Torifa has day. I'm not ashamed. What does that mean? I am celebrating. 
So learn to celebrate the word. Make up your mind. Your body may not like it. But tell yourself, I am supposed to celebrate. If you're not celebrating, which means you're ashamed. No, no, but I'm feeling pain. That's why I'm not shouting. No, you're just ashamed. That's what the Bible is saying. Now, I'm new in this church. Did he say when you go to another church which you know you celebrate? He said, wherever you go, go preaching. Don't be ashamed. Ah, you are in this church. When you don't have a clap, they will think you are, you are very mighty. What, what do carries over? Calls it the weapons of our fear. You see, by singing, it's a weapon. La Kata Pradesh. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Can you imagine Jesus said, If you're ashamed of me before men, I will also run away when it comes to reading your name before the Father and His angels. But if you're proud of me before men, I will even come in front and say, That one, that one is mine. God has bound himself to me. No, Jesus is pleased of me. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm not born ashamed. I'm born again. And I celebrate the world. I celebrate the world. <laughs> You see, when people come to our church, they don't get certain things. That's why when we carry them, when we go somewhere, we change that place. It will not appear like, no, no, we're in Kampala. We, we, are, we, we are not ashamed wherever we go. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm not a slave. I'm not ashamed. I'm not a slave of fear. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not a slave of fear. I'm not ashamed of fear. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm a child of God. <laughs> Praise God. Are you learning something? So the gospel is a power. And it tells us don't be ashamed. Preach. You are the custodians. You have been entrusted to preach. Verse 18. To eat that God was in Christ Jesus, King James, New King James. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. And has given us the ministry, ministry of, of reconciliation. reconciliation. He has given us. Tell you anybody he has given us. Keep going. That is that God was in Christ mm. reconciling the world to himself, mm. not imputing their trespasses to them mm. and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. And has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Now we are ambassadors for Christ. Although God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God. Praise God. Amen. For he made him who knew no sin to be made sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. Praise God. What is called the word of reconciliation? The word of reconciliation is right there in verse 19. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. And has committed to us the same word, not imputing. So how are you going to preach the gospel effectively? Not imputing them, their trespasses. That's what Christ is not telling you every day. He's not telling you your mistakes. He's not telling you your faults. He's not telling you your failures. He's pointing to your strength every day. Amen. That's the gospel. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to tell you you're rich. I'm not ashamed to tell you you, are, you can never be broke. I'm not ashamed to tell you you are healed, you're delivered, you're set free. I'm not ashamed.
Sometimes you need to know that when you fail to mention the gospel, it's an expression of pride. The Bible says you were healed by his stripes. You were healed. That's the gospel. Now, if you don't say that because it is scripture, you are trying to question the healing power of God. There's an opportunity for you to pray for a sick person. You never even make a step to say, let's believe God for this healing. You're quickly thinking, which hospital is near you? Especially those who are medics. You're just trying to, you're, you're immediately reasoning, this, this, this is malaria. Please go and... Let it be somebody to tell them it's malaria, not me. Okay, I can say this malaria. Let's rebuke this demon. Let, some, let it come from somebody that go and take water. I know that you can do, right? But, but, but it's not the first thing I am supposed to tell you. When I speak the first time, it's the gospel. Someone called me and said, Man, I'm sick. I'm I said, okay, fine. Let's speak in tongues. And I said, you are healed. Now, whether the person went to take medicines or where have you, I don't care. I just know the person is here sound and healed. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And listen, even if you take medicine, you know there is a quickening with the gospel. It's better to trust God. Even if you're taking drugs, medicines, that there is a bigger part of your faith in God. That's the advantage. If you preach the gospel, the gospel will save you. Praise God. Say, I preach the gospel. So, with the word of reconciliation, with the word of the ministry, you cannot be limited. Simple as it is, it is power. It is power. Acts chapter number four. Take from verse twenty-eight. So the gospel is power. We are being given the responsibility to preach. What are we supposed to do next? We have the word of reconciliation. Praise God. Four. Verse. 28. Verse 28 says. To do whatever your hand. And your purpose determined. Before to be done. Praise God. They had beaten them because they were preaching the gospel and they warned them. They warned them. They warned them. Verse 20. For we cannot but speak from verse number 18. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Verse 19. But Peter and John answered and said to them, mm -hmm, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. Verse 20. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. He's talking about the gospel. Verse 21. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people since they all glorified God for what had been done. For the man was over 40 years on whom the miracle was done. 23. And being let go, they went to their own companions. You see, they came to church and reported, we were in Shaba, and some lady poured hot water. No, sorry. <laughs> reported all that the chief priest. Because you see, there are places where Muslims are, and you're fearing to go. Go preach the gospel. 
Ah, our school is a Muslim school. Ah, our HM is very tough. Come on. When we're Ginger College, Mr. Mark knows that place. Be the, the, the physics laboratory and then senior four. Was that senior four? Green or whatever you. Just before you exit to the flats. There is a corridor there. We would gather every time at night. From 10 to midnight. It's a Catholic school. And yet every morning we're going for mass and we're doing like this. You did not get it. <laughs> Yet we are doing that just by, by law. Legalistically. But at night we do the real thing. Karuzava. Rapakata kata. Lipata. Who knows? Prayers is saved minister Mark also. I'm telling you. It's the power. It's a power. You may not feel it. You know the problem is you want to feel it. You may not feel it. But Jesus was walking. He was walking with the power. And some lady knew there was a power. But the disciples didn't know there was a power. She just put her hand in the power. And the power felt power had gone out. And the lady felt there is a power in her body. And the disciples are shocked. Wait a minute. You have never demonstrated power when we are in the house. No. You see only power at work when there are demons. When there is a problem. No, but you don't have any problem. But you don't have any demon. When darkness sees light, it begins to scream. Ah, this church have, have never felt power. People are not screaming. People are not vomiting. Brother, there is a higher life. Yeah. There is a higher life. There is a higher life. You can feel power and your eyes open. You don't have to vomit to feel there is power. You don't have to scream to feel there is power. Act alone. He said, he has translated you from the power of darkness to the kingdom of light where there is power. Now all that you have is power. In the abundance of power, you don't feel power. It is when you step out of the boat, that's when you feel the power can hold you from sinking. I wish you were getting it, somebody. It's when you go to preach. That's when you realize, wait a minute, I am powerful. I just said, demon, go, and it went. Uh, you get what I'm talking about? Just told that person, your stomach issue, go. And it went. And they returned, the Bible said, the 70 returned, and saying, Master, the demons obeyed us in your name, and they went screaming out. And yet they were not feeling power in their house, in their church, in their families, in their house. It is only when the neighbor had a headache that I went to say in the name of Jesus. And I said, this man is a man of God. Can you imagine the disciples ran away when Jesus was being crucified? But the soldiers, when they just saw power, they said, surely this is a man of God. He's crying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabastani. And even that is not to say power, I receive power, or power come out. He's just saying, God, Jesus is crying, why have you forsaken me? And they're saying, he cried like Elijah. Can you imagine? And darkness appeared. Yeah. You're just in a taxi and saying the name of Jesus. This thing is not right. And then there's power going out. Ah, now I'm going to release power. Ah, ah. Th that is not to do it. In your day-to-day -day activity, it is not for you to know there is power. It is for them. He said, and this sign shall follow you. Wherefore tongues are a sign to the non-believers. Demonstrating power is not for you. It's for them. 
He said, Paul, I've appointed you that you may turn them from the power of Satan to the power of God. Acts 26 and verse 20 from verse 18. He said, I've called you to give them forgiveness. What? Give them forgiveness? That's power. So four men came with a leper, or rather a crippled man, and then they passed, laying him down from the roof. And upon whom Jesus saying, Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. It's the gospel. And they complained, it's blasphemy. How can you forgive? What did he say? That you may know that the son of man has power. To forgive sins. So I'm not ashamed of the gospel. So pray the gospel. Pray the gospel. This coming month we are going to capture for Omega Word. And healing summit. Yeah. So we go to Kumi, we go to Soroti, we go to Buku, we go to Kampala, we come to Kapchora. After that, you, you, you never know. We may go to Ajumani. I don't know if you're getting it. Listen, he has given us the power. The people need the power. But you're in your church saying, Akorete Vulunji Nayimba. Yambuka. Yambuka. You are not taking the power. <laughs> He said, go to the whole world and preach the gospel. Save them from the power of Satan. Yes. Yes. So be on the move. Don't be glued to your business. Don't be glued to your place of work. Be on the move. If somehow the bus has left you, connect online and flow. So right here, the disciples were threatened. And they went to pray. They went to pray. And they prayed and said, Oh God, we are praying for one thing. They are not saying give us power. Look at their prayer. Verse number 24. So when they had heard that, they raised their voice to God. This is the reason why we pray aloud. Speaking tongues. Shabba, 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 shabba. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of the gospel. La capate libre de copa liga. No, when I begin to pray in my house, even my boy stands like me and then begins to do his thing. Uh, one year old boy, boy above twenty, you are hiding behind the. He's saying shaba shaba shaba. <laughs> The day the angel will appear and say, wrong, don't do the thing. You pray like you have lost a gun. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> say, Jesus is Lord. Pray. Comes the prayer. Takata. Lipakata. We just come to pray. The first overnight we're having in the church, and another man is hearing the voice. He says, I cannot sleep. I am coming. The guy came and belonged to this church. What are you talking about? This praying can save. A Muslim needs a speaker to pray. For you, you don't need a speaker. There's a problem. <laughs> the guy wakes up at five and they mention their funny things to their God. And for you, he was still sleeping. Okay, what about when you come? You know, it's funny. It's funny. In the morning, they put the speaker. When they go to their mosque, they are quiet. You don't hear them. It's really... Okay, let me not preach, brother. But I'm just trying to tell you, there is something big. The Bible says, and they lifted up their voice. What does that mean? Lifting up the voice is what? Lifting up the hands. Yes. They increased the volume. They looked for a speaker. Just imagine... <laughs> make use of your speakers at home make use of those hoofers at home make use of your mouth at home 
where Pastor David stays is a flat. Every time he would tell me, he wakes up and he prays like the speaker. And they don't know this man. They don't see him. They just know there is somebody who prays a language we don't know. But the impact has been felt. If someone was stealing, they first pause until when it's done. It's power. It's power. <laughs> what are you doing in your house? Ah, my neighbors are very tough. So they are bigger than you. They carry a bigger God than you. The one who is big shouts more. Praise God. And so they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God. You made heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. Who by the mouth of the servant David said in verse number 29. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. They know the power is there. For you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. The power is there. Lord, this mouth must speak more. I need a big voice. I need confidence. All you need is confidence. So they said, give us the boldness. That's the third thing about this gospel. This gospel is the power of God and the salvation. Number two, it has been given to us. Number three, we need to speak with boldness. When you discover you're not preaching the gospel, speak in tongues, you will be bold. And then he says, give us boldness that we may speak your word. Because the word is power. We know the word is power. We are not doubting it. We only need it to come out in a big way. Because we know what it's capable of doing. If I can speak it louder, I know it will save some people's lives. By stretching out your hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus Christ. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the third one. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the whole thing with praying aloud. It gets you to be filled with the Spirit. You cannot be filled when you're just quiet. There has to be a melody in your heart. There has to be a song around you. I pray more when I put a worship song around me and I'm praying. I pray more. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Learn to pray aloud. Learn it. Learn it. Learn to pray aloud. And when they had prayed, the place where they were were assembled and they were shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word, you see, with boldness. Being filled with the Holy Ghost. Preaching the gospel needs that feeling. Praise God. Have you learned something? So I'll pray. I'll pray. I'll pray. I'll preach. I will speak the word. Lift up your hand and say, Father, I receive grace this morning. This day for preaching. I'm a preacher of the gospel. I preach life. I preach power in the name of Jesus. Say hallelujah. Say I preach power. I preach the word. I preach the gospel. Shataki lepra akatola beneva. Revando sovragadile copper. Pray aloud. Pray aloud. Rade kozo ho kafa. Ratia koso to prege Maraguza jak ikatala Rakatura siso fregedesh 
Rakatia Zizra Hak tonight. Hak tonight. Hak tonight. Hak tonight. Kadilos Fradish Fragazista Ravika Fresush Evrandas Fronalis Kafa. In Jesus' name. Get a hold of your friend. We give in the house of Prophet Isaac Prosper, changing lives around the world with the testimony of Jesus in powerful demonstrations of the Holy Spirit and a mighty prophetic, evangelistic, and teaching ministry. For more of this, join us for service every Tuesday at 5 p.m. and every Sunday from 8 a.m at the City of Wonders, opposite Reliance View Hotel, Maluku Mbale City. And find us on our media platforms on YouTube at Prophet Isaac Prosper and on Facebook at Prophet Prosper Isaac.C.Wonge. Shalom.